four billion years ago on Earth, and what you see around us, what a great day, a great sight, holy mackerel, this is a great place. But what we see is around four billion years into the evolutionary history of this planet. Four billion years has resulted in this. A wondrous diversity. Uh, but does that, is, has that rate, have those processes operated at about the same rate in basically the same way, not necessarily the same pathways, uh, elsewhere? Is intelligence inevitable? If an asteroid had not hit the Yucatan Peninsula 65 million years ago, would intelligence have been inevitable? In knocking out the dinosaurs. What are the philosophical implications of finding complex life elsewhere? Giordano Bruno, who most of us, or all of us perhaps know, uh, suffered a really bad fate. He had a very bad day uh, when, he, when he mentioned that uh, complex life was common. Burned at the stake. That, that's a bad day. <laughs> that is a bad day. And uh, uh, because he was saying, you know, uh, the sun is a star, and when I look up in the sky at night, I see lots of stars. And uh, let me see, uh, the next, next step in the, in the pedestrian logic would be, if there are planets around this star, then I bet you there are planets around those stars, and then what's the next step? in the simple logic, and that is if there's life here, there must be life all over the place. And that was, that was considered heretical at the time, because, of course, we are the center of the universe. Where else would God put us? <laughs> so as soon as you open up the notion that perhaps there, there may, be, may be more than one, uh, then you're putting yourself in, in harm's way, and Giordano uh, turned to smoke uh, that day. <laughs> so the, the, one of the processes then is, uh, based on what we think, and of course Descartes and, and many uh, physicists and mathematicians have worked for several centuries uh, on the mathematics and the physics to figure out um, how planets might form around stars, and is that a common process? Do they do, during a star-forming process, does a disk a disk of gas and dust form. And if there is a disk of gas and dust, do planets form out of that di uh, disk of ga gas, gas and dust? Say that fast. <laughs> disk of gas and dust. And uh, we, current astronomical constraints suggest that disks are short-lived in the star-forming process. Uh, the process starts and is over perhaps in less than 10 million years. Hmm. Uh, it's astronomically then quite rapid. Increasingly it appears, as astronomers like you know very well, that disks are common. Disks of gas and dust in the galaxy are common. Also, of course, the universe is absolutely mind-bogglingly vast, again, as you also understand. We're looking at a Hubble deep space image here, an ultra deep field image that I'm sure you've all seen, in which virtually every little splotch of light on this image here, about roughly the size in the sky of about the moon, very small part of the sky, uh, is a galaxy. Every little thing here is a galaxy with about a hundred billion stars each, we're looking at a large, if this is representative of the sky, then the number of stars could be, of course, large. About 10 to the 22 is one reasonable estimate for it, one followed by 22 zero. If planets are common, perhaps the number of planets may even be greater. So with that large number to play with, uh, is complex life likely to be common or rare, or even is the question answerable? Let's get to some of the data then about is it, is it answerable, and, what, and if it is, where do we lead from it? First question, is carbon-based life common and most likely to be the most common life, form of life that we might encounter or measure or detect. Here is 
uh, an, a graph uh, showing atomic number going from hydrogen, the simplest of the elements, out beyond uh, lead and bismuth toward uranium and thorium out here. So increasing atomic number, atomic number of course is the number of protons in the nucleus of atoms. Simple elements, more complex elements going to the right. And the abundance of those elements shown here increasing by factors of 10 each on each step here. The total range then of abundances we're seeing from here to there you see is over 10 orders of magnitude. Notice where carbon plots. Hydrogen and helium of course are the most abundant elements in the universe uh, but notice that carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen are also are very uh, coming a close second uh, to hydrogen and helium. Carbon is abundant. We are made of common stuff. We're made of common stuff. Carbon also, for chemists in the audience, you know how diverse and wondrous a chemical bonding with carbon is. Carbon is also a very special element and produces, of course, our magnificently diverse biochemistry. Silicon, notice, silicon is about a factor of 10 less abundant in the universe than carbon. It also has a chemistry which is trivial in its complexity compared to that of carbon. So, in in partial answer, I would like to suggest to you that if we were to find life elsewhere in the universe, it is likely, it is plausible, it is not carbon chauvinism, it seems to me, to suspect that it would be carbon-based. It would not necessarily be DNA, but it would involve carbon chemistry. No uh, Not, I can't say no, no hordas, but... Uh, they would be, if one went by, you'd notice. You'd say, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a rare enough event. But, uh, you'd write home about it. I just visited a place where there are hortas. And that would, you know, that would get some, that would get newspaper time. Uh, but but carbon, carbon, I think, it may not, we may not be special from that point of view. Carbon-based life. We are common stuff. What about the uh, discovery of planets? Of course, about 10 years ago, no planets were known around other stars. Charbonneau and other pioneers oh, who not only have great intellect, but also su really substantial academic courage to have pursued this issue. Uh, ten years ago, it was crazy to talk about looking for planets around other stars. Crazy, in the academic sense, means you will not get tenure if you fail. <laughs> so go ahead. Make our day. Go ahead. <laughs> Try it. But when you come up for tenure, don't expect much. So these were, these were people who really put their necks out academically to do this. And uh, hats off, they really did a job, and are still doing a superb job. Uh, the idea of looking for atmospheres around planets, of course, was, if looking for <coughs> planets themselves was crazy, <coughs> and looking for atmospheres was laughable. And then looking for Earth-like planets, small things like us, uh, would be utterly, preposterously nuts. And then trying to measure their atmospheres and m determine whether they have life is beyond nuts, but we will be doing. <laughs>